Hi everyone, Joseph here and this is Business in 10. This video is about how Canada Pension Plan, CPP and Old Age Security, OAS work. You can go on a mind bender trying to figure out how these two pensions work. In this video, I'll keep things simple and straightforward. My name is Joseph L. Chakia and if you want to know more about me, please visit my website businessin10.com. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. This way you will get notified for when I will publish the next video. I have a retirement budget form. I believe it can help you in a big way to figure out your retirement finances. So please pick it up. It is yours for free. I left the link in the description section below. I also have a lot of information on these topics on my website. Please check them out. I left you the link in the description section as well. Canada Pension Plan. You can apply for and receive a full Canada Pension Plan benefit at age 65. You can also receive it as early as age 60 with a reduction or as late as age 70 with an increase. As of January 2019, the average amount for a Canada Pension Plan benefit is $679. And the maximum amount is $1,155. If CPP is taken before the age of 65, then the benefit is reduced by 0.6% every month or 7.2% annually. So if you choose to start taking CPP at age 60, your benefit will be decreased by 36%. The Government of Canada gives you an incentive to take CPP after the age of 65. So if you choose to do that, the benefit increases by 0.7% every month or 8.4% annually. So if you want to start taking CPP at age 70, your benefit will increase by 42%. So you probably are asking, well, what does this mean? And when should you take the CPP and so on? Well, to help you with this, I'm going to do two calculations. One, if you choose to take your CPP at age 60 instead of 65, what would the break-even age be? And two, if you choose to take your CPP at the age of 70 instead of 65, what would your break-even age be then? For both calculations, let's assume the CPP full benefit at age 65 to be $1,000. Calculation one, if you choose to take your CPP at age 60 instead of 65, what would the break-even age be? At age 60, you will receive less money and your monthly payment would be reduced by 36%. So instead of receiving the $1,000, you will receive $640. By doing that, you will be paid a total of $38,400 by the time you hit the age 65. This is based on you receiving $640 per month 7,680 per year, which makes it $38,400 for five years. Cool? On the other hand, let's say you choose to wait and receive the full amount of $1,000 per month at the age of 65. How will that change things? If we do the math, it will take you nine years to catch up, which makes the break-even age to be 74 years. This means that you have to receive the $1,000 per month starting at the age of 65 for nine years until you hit the age of 74 to catch up with the first alternative of receiving $640 at the age of 60. Now calculation two. If you choose to take your CPP at the age of 70 instead of 65. At age 65, you receive the full benefit of $1,000 per month. By doing that, you will be paid a total of $60,000 by the time you hit age 70. This is based on you receiving $1,000 per month, $12,000 per year, which makes it $60,000 for five years. On the other hand, let's say you choose to wait and receive the money at age 70. This will give you an increase of 42%. So instead of receiving $1,000, you will receive $1,420 per month at age 70. How will that change things? If we do the math, it will take you 12 years to catch up which makes the break-even age to be 
82 years. This means that you have to receive the $1,420 per month starting at the age of 70 for 12 years until you hit the age of 82 to catch up with the first alternative of receiving $1,000 at the age of 65. To summarize, if you choose to take your CPP at the age of 60 instead of 65, the break-even age is 74. If you choose to take your CPP at the age of 70 instead of 65, the break-even age is 82. This calculation is a good guideline. If you are healthy, you have good genetics and a good family health history, wait and take your CPP later. If not, take it sooner. It is very hard to predict the future, and if you want to keep things simple, do one of the following two options. One, if you need the money, don't wait. Take your CPP as soon as you think you need it. Two, if you don't need the money, take it at the full retirement age of 65. As simple as that. Remember, your Canada Pension Plan does not start automatically. You must apply for it. And it increases with inflation. It is adjusted based on the consumer price index once a year in January. And please note your CPP is taxable. There are a few more rules here and there, and I will leave you the Government of Canada website link to CPP in the description section if you want to dig into it some more. Now let's talk about old age security. Your employment history is not a factor in determining eligibility. You can receive the old age security pension even if you have never worked or are still working. To be eligible for old age security for people living in Canada, you must be 65 years old, be a Canadian citizen or a legal resident at the time of approval of your OIS, and three, have resided in Canada for at least 10 years since the age of 18. To be eligible for old age security for people living outside Canada, you must be one, 65 years old, two, have been a Canadian citizen or a legal resident on the day you left Canada, and three, have resided in Canada for at least 20 years since the age of 18. To get the maximum old age security of $607 as of July 2019, you have to have resided in Canada for at least 40 years after turning 18. And you have to have resided in Canada continuously for 10 years immediately before the approval of your old age security pension. You cannot take old age security before the age of 65. The only thing you can do is delay it until the age of 70. When you delay your OAS, you get an increase of 0.6% every month or 7.2% annually, a total of 36% by the time you hit the age of 70. As an example, let's say you are 65 years old right now and you are eligible to the current maximum OAS of $607 per month, but you choose to delay receiving it until the age of 70. Your old age security at that age will be $826 per month. The question becomes, does this make sense to you? In order for you to determine that, you would need to do the break-even calculation. And so if we do the math, the break-even age would be 84 years. So you would have to be 84 years old to catch up if you choose to take your OAS at the age of 70 instead of the age of 65. Depending on your financial situation and how long you think you will live, you may choose to take it at age 65 or delay it. Or if you want to keep things simple, just take it at age 65. Here are a few more things about old age security. Old age security increases with inflation and is adjusted based on the consumer price index every three months in January, April, July, and October. Please note your OAS is taxable. There are a few more rules here and there. I will leave you the Government of Canada website linked OAS in the description section if you want to dig into it some more. I hope this video made sense to you. If it did, please share it and hit the thumbs up. Tell me what topics you'd like me to cover next by leaving me a comment in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. This way you will know when I will release the next video. 
please don't forget to download the retirement budget form. I believe it can help you in a big way to figure out your retirement finances. I left you the link in the description section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.